Here we're looking at section six in our chapter two. So we're gonna be building and analyzing functions. That's our only learning target for today. So let's see what we can look at, okay? So here's our first example. First, we're gonna find the distance from the origin to the point on a graph. So I have a point P, which we're gonna label as X, Y, because it's gonna be somewhere in our coordinates be that point on this graph of y equals x squared minus one. So I see here we're dealing with a quadratic function. Okay, so first thing I need to do is express the distance from p to the origin as a function of x, right? And p can be any point x, y. So now we're gonna figure out um, d if my x is zero, then what if x is one? And then what if x is the square root of two over two? So let's take a look at what this looks like. First we wanna look at our picture. Right? So here's just a general picture. So this blue line is that curve of my x squared minus one. Here's my origin, and here's a point P that we're looking at. And remember that point P could really be any point along this curve, and I'm just finding the distance between that point and the origin. Okay, so here's how we do this. I'm gonna go ahead and use the distance formula, right? Which is D, which is my distance, is the square root of the change in x values squared plus the change in y values squared. So in this case, my first point is at x, y, and my second point is at the origin. So I get my x, y is that point. So here's my x and my y. And then we're talking about the origin, which is at zero comma zero. So here's where I get my zero and my zero. Okay, so then I can simplify and here we go. I've got the square root of x squared plus y squared. So since P is now a point on this specific graph, right, we've just been talking here a general graph. Now I have an X squared minus one. I'm going to substitute that X squared minus one anywhere I see Y. Because here I go, Y equals X squared minus one. So anywhere in this I see that, I can plug in the information. So I go ahead and X squared plus the quantity X squared minus one squared. So then I can go ahead and distribute, I do not ever want to distribute an exponent. This means really x squared minus one times x squared minus one, right? It is not x to the fourth minus one. So then I can kind of continue to simplify and here's what I end up with. So I end up with the square root of x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. So that is written as my function of x. So now in part B I was asked, what if x is zero? What is the distance? So anywhere I see a zero in here, an x in there I place in a zero, and I can simplify and solve. So when x is zero, the distance from that point on my parabola to the origin is one. Okay. So then I was asked, what if x is one? Now how can I find the distance? So again, I just plug in my one anywhere I see an x, and I simplify and solve. And it is also one. So you can look back at this picture and see just does that actually make sense? Well, when my x was zero, I'm talking about this point down here. So yes, this distance would be one. Well, and then when my x was one, we're looking at this point here. Yes, my distance here is also one. So both of my um, problems make sense. So now let's look at part D. So if x is the square root of two over two, I can just do the same thing and simplify. Plug in that square root of two over two anywhere I see an x and find um, that to the fourth minus that to the second plus one so I can simplify and solve. So I end up with the square root of three over two. So then I can also use a graph to kind of help me find the minimum, okay? So this will help us later when we're finding some areas. So this is what it looks like when I graph this equation and when I graph um, my distance formula here, okay? So I'm graphing the distance because I want to minimize the distance. I want to find the point that is closest to the origin. That's really what I'm doing here. So I go ahead and I graph my distance that I found. Then on my calculator, I can use the minimum feature, or if we're using Desmos, if you just click on the part that you think is closest to the minimum, it will tell you what your x and y is. So I find when I do that, I end up with x is approximately 0.71. So that's where my distance is smallest, is when x is 0.71, okay? So then I can continue looking at my graph and see um, where is closest to the origin, and just, um, that's kind of the cool thing that we can do, is also see where's my distance the shortest and where's my distance the longest, okay? So that's what that looks like in an actual graphing calculator, um, but you can also use Desmos to do the same thing. So here's example number two. 
So here we're finding um, the area of a rectangle, and we're going to be using some of the similar things we just did. So here I have a rectangle with one corner in quadrant one on this, and it lies on the graph of this y equals 25 minus x squared. Okay, so again, another parabola. So I know that the corner of my rectangle is on this graph somewhere. Another point is at the origin, and my other two points lie on the x and y axis. Okay, so here's kind of a general drawing of what we're looking at. So first I want to express the area of the rectangle, so I'm looking at the area here as a function of f of x. Then we're going to look at the domain, then we're going to graph these things. So we're going to graph the area, and then we want to maximize, right? So find the value of x that has the largest area. So we can do that as well. So first of all, I know that to find the area of a rectangle, it's length times width, which is here we go. So I've got my x times y because this length here would be x and this would be y. So again, I have a y equals because I have my actual equation up here. So anywhere I have a y in my area equation, I can substitute this in. So I end up with 25x minus x cubed. That is the, the expression for the area of this rectangle. And remember, this could be really any rectangle in here. If, even if I draw it like this, it would still work because I just have a different x and y and I could still find that as well. So now let's look at B. We want to look at the domain. Okay, so since I'm looking in just the first quadrant, right, my domain is going to be, I know, greater than zero because I can't have any piece over here that's less than zero. But I also know that it can't be outside of my graph because I was told that one point of my rectangle has to fall on my graph. So I know that my graph crosses the x-axis here at five, so it's going to be less than five, but greater than zero. So I can write it as well, right here. So I can write it in um, interval notation, I can write it in just domain notation, I can write it in many different ways, okay? So there's several ways I can find the domain. So my domain remembers all my x values, so the only possible x values are between zero and five, okay? So now we're gonna look at the graph of this um, area function. So again, I take my calculator or my Desmos and I just graph the area function because we're asked to maximize the area. So I want to graph this and then I can use my maximum figure or I can just click on Desmos and see about here's my maximum and it will tell me that when x is approximately 2.89 that's going to be the maximum area of the rectangle. So that's exactly what we found down here. And it also tells me the maximum area. So when, I, when x is 2.89, the area is going to be about 48.1 uh, centimeters or meters, whatever we ended up looking at here, whatever our function was. Okay. So now here's our last example. So suppose two planes flying at the same altitude are headed towards each other. One plane is flying due south at a ground speed of 400 miles per hour and is 600 miles from the potential intersection point of the planes. The other plane is flying due west with a ground speed of 250 miles per hour and is 400 miles from the potential intersection point. So we're gonna look at this little picture because we always wanna start with a picture, okay? So here's our first plane flying due south at 400 miles per hour and it's 600 miles from where they would cross, okay? Here's my second plane flying at 250 miles per hour that is 400 miles from where they would intersect. Okay, so now A, we have to build a model that expresses the distance between the planes as a function of time. So I'll write my distance between those two points. And then B, we're going to um, graph that and kind of find how close they come to each other. So when we're looking at how close they come to each other, that would be minimizing the distance. I want to find where the distance is the smallest. And then that will also tell us what, when that happens. Okay, so the things we have to see here is we're going to, again, use our distance formula, which is the Pythagorean theorem, right, because I have this lovely right triangle, okay, and I have some information here too, okay. So the distance, right, is the right triangle, so at any time, we have to include this time variable because it's, um, my x and y are changing, okay. At any time, the length of the north-south leg of the triangle, so my up and down, my first plane is 600 minus 400t, right? Because it's going 400 miles per hour. 
is what we were told. So we can use that similar to write our um, east-west leg of my triangle. So it's 400, it starts at 400 miles away and it's getting 250 miles per hour closer. So I want to use my Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula, they're the same thing, to find the square of the distance between those two planes. Okay, so again, here's my function. I just go ahead and write that out. So it's my a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then I take the square root of both sides. So now let's look at, once we have this, this is our distance, that's how we find, we've written the model, we've built the function. So now I can go ahead and graph that and see what it looks like. So here's what it looks like. And I see here I've got kind of a minimum right about here. So using my calculator's minimum function or Desmos, clicking on it, and that will tell me, I can see that when x is 1.5, which meant 1.5 hours, the planes were this far apart, right? So I can use that, all of that information to help me. So again, using the minimum, I see the minimum distance was 21.2 miles after about 1.53 hours. So I've built the function first, and then I can use that function to help me minimize or maximize um, some of the areas and some of the spaces. Really, that's it for this section. So we had to build and analyze functions. So most of the time when we're building these functions, we're going to be using a lot of the distance formula. We're going to be taking other formulas that we know and making them work with the functions that we're given. The first step is always going to be draw out what you're looking at, and then from there you can create your function and see where we're going. So now that we've gone through this, go ahead and work on your homework for this section.